So today's a little seminar on pets and companions coming up very soon. Could be three months, could be five, could be next week. We don't know. But coming up very soon, we're getting companion changes. And there's going to be a drastic shift in the market. Right now, the only companion that people really use is the P. Capanzer, Capipolist, or uh, Gurf over here. This is the Shmita. These are like the only pets people use for the most part and with good reason. We have Charm, the Panzer Vopophila. I'm sure you understand how that works um, but before we really get into it I would just like to say that uh, the mods are all in order of operations it is left to right top row and then left to right bottom row so whatever you want to work first or work most often you put in the front and then so on and so forth um, it doesn't really matter where you put fetch I usually put that in the end I don't know why that was there it should be like this um, but uh, a lot of people say oh it's not using this ability and then they link their build and they have charge charm all the way down here. So if you want charm to proc the most, put it up front. Um, now the prices for Riven companion weapons are going to skyrocket. So the main bulk of this video is telling you to invest in any sort of companion Rivens immediately. Don't wait till next week. Don't wait till next month. Do it right now. Um, so before we get into which companions you should go after, I'm going to go over some companion uh, weapons. Now there's basically two main companion weapons that you should be aware of. A lot of these um, have major short Cummings are, are completely outclassed by other uh, weapons on companions, but if you get a G-roll Riven for some of these, it can kind of fix uh, almost all of their problems. Uh, for example, I believe it's the Volcock. Uh, yeah, this is a sniper. Uh, this has a 0.5 fire rate. If you got a G-roll Riven that only had two positives and a negative, this could actually be very, very good for doing damage. But for the most part, it's outclassed by the Verglass. The Verglass is the highest damage dealing companion weapon. My build don't. My build's bad right now. It's just gas and cold, and it's applying a lot of status. My my build is just botched right now. But the main takeaway from this specific Verglass build is that you want to make sure on your companion pet weapons that they don't have the Gao mods. I know it seems like when you put this on. Um, you lose a little bit of multi-shot, but you're like, oh, well, look at that. The, the Verglass actually does kill. It's one of the few companion weapons that certified kills. But you think like, oh, we're going to get the five stacks of this. No, anything that has an action or a stack or anything like that will not work on pets for whatever reason. This is subject to change, possibly, but likely not. Hopefully they do do a bit of retuning. But as it is now, make sure you're using Split Chamber instead of using anything like Gal Chamber. As much as it, you know, I like having the black mods on but it is what it is so Verglass, like I said, this is like the main damage dealing companion weapon, but unfortunately, this is the single most expensive Riven. People know about this gun. People know about this Riven, so getting a Riven for this, you're lucky to get one for under a thousand plat. People are super skeevy with theirs, but the Hellstrom, not many people know about it. This is, in my opinion, the single best priming um, companion weapon. Now, before I go too much further into talking about priming and companion re weapons, you see how my energy color there is pink. You can even make both of these pink or whatever color you prefer, but the reason I have this as bright pink that matches nothing I have equipped is because this allows me to very easily and clearly see, oh, this enemy is primed and ready for death. And primes for what, may I ask you, or might you ask, or, or what is priming? So stuff like this. So this uh, Hellstrom here, with this particular build, I can do gas, electricity, impact, and puncture all in a single volley. Or you can swap some things around if you're more uh, less nuanced and do viral heat impact puncture it's, it's doing all of these um and what's what's really phenomenal about this weapon is that it's kind of lying to you it says multi-shot 2.5 right here that's a certified lie each one bullet each one multi-shot from this weapon is four heat seeking missiles that explode and have a radius of three uh before uh primed firestorm so by having 2.5 uh four eight ten that is ten heat seeking explosive missiles coming out of it now as you can see, I have three ribbons for this. Uh, two are are pretty close to God roll. 
Um, see, this has minus crit damage. That's actually not bad because you're never going to hit the crit. And the, if you're never going to hit the crit, crit damage is a totally wasted stat. So that's basically a harmless neg. Um, uh, and it's got status, cold, multi-shot. So this could certified replace a mod. If your ribbon can't replace a mod in any way, shape, or form, uh, more times than not, sometimes there's exceptions, it's not a good ribbon. But this can certified replace a mod. Uh, same with this. This is fire rate and projectile speed. The biggest hampering of this weapon is its fire rate and its projectile speed. It has very low fire rate and very low projectile speed, uh, which is uh, a real a real shame. Uh, but uh, you see how I have just two here. I thought this was like the the best I would ever get, uh, and I bought both these ribs for 50 platinum each. Five zero platinum each, and I rolled them myself. But then someone in a clan or an alliance gave me a ribbon for free, and I was like, what? And they gave me this ribbon for free. It wasn't rolled at the time. I rolled it twice, and this is what I would call a certified god roll. A lot of people would say that, oh, it's minus Grenier. You never want faction damage, especially not minus Grenier faction damage. That's a death sentence on 99% of ribbons. But the thing is, you're not using this for any sort of damage. The damage is not the reason you're using this. You're using this as a primer. So having minus Grenier, having minus uh, any any faction does not matter at all on the Hellstrom ribbon specifically. Now, you could argue, oh, it's not a G roll because you want the three paws and one neg. That's not true because if this had a, another positive, the values of the projectile speed and the fire rate would be slightly diminished. So for a lot of your um, your companion ribbons that are there solely to mitigate a negative factor of it, say slow fire rate and projectile speed, you only want the two. You only want the two so that it can get the biggest boost possible. Now, there are some other things. Um, say say you didn't have this, <clears throat> this G-roll ribbon there. Uh, I would highly suggest you use terminal velocity to get the 60% uh, speed and just use this build. But as I said, my ribbon, it not only is it uh, helping with projectile flight speed, or, or fire rate, I should say, but it's replacing a mod. You want your ribbons to replace a mod, otherwise they could potentially be bad, uh, generally, generally speaking. So this has been the Hellstrom, uh, and we talked about the Verglass. As I said, some of these other ones are, like, okay, but I would say that the Hellstrom and the Verglass are the best um, without a, a G-Roll ribbon, but some of these other ones can be viable, I would say, with a G-Roll ribbon, but specifically, you want to be hunting these. But the thing is, as I said, people know about the Verglass. Not a lot of people know about the Hellstrom. They don't even know what it is for most of the time. Um, and then... Now let's kind of talk about pets. I would say up and coming, because we're getting the pet changes that make your pets revive, now you won't only have to use Panzer Volpophila. Now I think that Nautilus is very quickly going to become a top tier pet. I've already considered it a top tier pet and everyone always disagrees with me. But when they're looking at the Nautilus, they're looking at... Uh, all the way over here, they're not looking at what's good. They're looking at, oh, Auto Omni, who needs that? 100% chance to repair nearby rail jack hull damage, but you have to, like, run up to it? That's fucking garbage. Who would ever use that? Well, you're right. Who would ever use that? We're using Cordon. Cordon is insane. This is a 30 meter, 30 meter grouping tool. This doesn't just group left, right uh, in a vertical sense uh, or a horizontal sense. It's up and down. It's left and right. It's like a big circle of 30 meters that it's grouping together. So this is extremely useful, especially with the Hellstrom. As you see, this right now has a four point. 32 meter radius. This is grouping everything up into one tiny ball. So not only is everything getting grouped up into one tiny ball, it's all getting one, two, three, four statuses all applied all at once. And the crazy part is it's not just getting one of each stack. It's getting multiples of each stack because again, there's 10 missiles coming out of this. So 10 missiles going into a tiny zone, it's pretty much hitting all of them. And you can tell when it's hitting them because it's bright pink or whatever color you prefer. Um, so I foresee that this is going to be one of the top tier pets. I already think it's one of the top tier pets. Uh, but now let's kind of talk about some of the other pets you should be on the lookout for. Dariga, I think, is very good because it has calculated shot. This is the longest distance companion shooting distance thing. So this will be shooting at enemies all the time. This will be shooting at enemies you don't even see. Really insane, phenomenal mod. 
uh, 60, 70 meters is really outstanding. Um, now the other um, things on this are kind of eh, like electro pulse. Uh, this is one enemy it's sapping. This is kind of not worth it at all. But arc coil is actually kind of useful um, because it stuns them for a little bit within 10 meters. You see it, pro it this will proc a lot, especially because again, order of operations, I have it at the front. Um, and it can sometimes help with CO, but this arc coil does not not proc Archon Stretch. We're going to go over to Excal for a second. I'm just going to show you Archon Stretch. You see how this has the passive electricity damage has a chance to, well, it doesn't have a chance. It does restore 2% or 2 energy over 5 seconds. Uh, it does not proc that. But you know what does proc that? We're going to go all the way down here to, uh, or maybe up here, I forget where it is, to my pecan. Whoops, I clicked the wrong one. Uh, Pecan here. Uh, this is one of the hounds. So this has a lot of different mods on it, but as synergized perspective, see how this also does electricity damage. Well, guess what? This will proc your Archon stretch. So a lot of times people will ask me, why do you have Archon stretch on? You literally don't have any electricity on your build at all. And it's well, my Pecan will proc it constantly. And if you're using a tank frame, uh, like this is almost uh, adaptation. This is at 78%. Uh, if you're using this on a full umbral Valkyr, you can get it up to 89% if I'm not mistaken. So literally an adaptation. So these have crazy survivability if you're using it on a tank frame. A lot of times people will use these uh, kind of like dog pets and whatnot. Uh, they'll use them with the link armor and everything and they'll use them on like... Uh, <laughs> They'll use it on like a Trinity or someone who doesn't have any sort of like health mods on them. So they're super, super, super squishy. Um, these are kind of, these are pretty durable, especially I use Evasive Denial as the first prefix. My second uh, prefix that it uses is Null Audit. This sh strips Overguard and it uh, takes the ability. So say it's an Energy Drain uh, Eximus, well now your pet is going to do Energy Drain and give you energy and your teammates too. This also applies to your teammates. Uh, very useful because some of the effects are very good. Some of them are like non-existent basically, but uh, this will work on your Archon Stretch, which is very useful. And you can also get ribbons for this pet. This pet has three different weapons. I would personally recommend, uh, there's one with Slash Impact, one with Impact Puncture, and then one with Slash Puncture. I would personally recommend the uh, either either of the ones that have Slash. You could probably make a case now that uh, Puncture has been changed that the Puncture one might be all right for this because it's flat. Uh, but then you'd have to build this for status, and I don't think that's the way to go. So I went with this one partly because I got a ribbon for it. These ribbons are extremely difficult to get as is, and when pets get reworked, uh, like I said, it's possible that some pets will have big overall reworks instead of just uh, vague blanket statements for everyone. So if they get specific mod reworks, that could shake up the meta even more than the existing changes that will blanket for everyone. Um, so this is almost a certified god roll. The negative is like, uh, I wish it wasn't faction damage, I wish it was impact, uh, but uh, either than that, it's not going to get much better than this. Melee, heat, slash, that's really phenomenal. I know I was just saying that you generally want just two uh, positives, but that's usually for when you're mitigating a uh, a negative factor of your weapon. Now, the biggest negative factor of the Lacertine or any of these Hound weapons is that they just don't do a lot of damage. So with this one, you probably would want the extra just raw damage being added to it. Because um, as you can see, 5,000, that's not really too much. But it is... Uh, pfft, it's, it's more than most pets can say, right? And who knows, like I said, if they just up the values for a lot of weapons, um, they have upped the uh, the Riven disposition for this before. It used to be uh, like 0.5 for years and years and years. And these numbers were at like, uh, I think it was like 30% heat, 20% slash, something like that. It was really, really, really bad percentages here. But uh, just up in the dispo helped a ton. Um, so that's that pet. Um, some stuff like the Helminth Charger, this uh, is probably still going to be useless, unfortunately, um, but it does have potential to, if they change some of this, like Trample, for, exist for example, I use this solely on a Trinity build. Uh, it's a, a Blessing build where I get critical damage when I heal myself and allies. So I'm using Trample on this specifically because I want my Helminth to just run the fuck in there and take damage. 
damage. This does almost nothing else besides get your pet to be a suicidal maniac. Um, as you can see, it does 100 damage to all in, 160 damage to all in its path. In case you're unaware, because enemies have armor, 160 damage is absolutely nothing. It will not even do a spec off of their health bar. Uh, so if they change this to even just 16% of their health or something like that, this could be absolutely huge. Uh, the strain bonuses are very nice. It makes your pet look really cool because they get uh, bigger with each one of these mods that's equipped. So with four, your, your, your pet will be like bigger than your atlas, which is insane. Uh, and it'll spew maggots all over the place. So the Helminth is one that has potential to be really good, but it's unlikely. They would have to change a lot for it. Um, but it's such a beautiful pet. I really love the Helminth Charger uh, aesthetically and lore-wise and whatnot. But one pet that I foresee will get big buffs, because uh, I think they're going to have to change Digin. Uh, Digin is pretty cool. I've used it in one of my other videos uh, for a backup strats on backup strats on backup strats. So the backup strat is you get sacrifice this mod was from an event yonder ago i can't even imagine what the price is now i would guesstimate 100 plat for this i uh, could totally be wrong for this uh, specific mod sacrifice sentinel takes four seconds to revive its downed owner to 100 percent health and shields destroying itself after the process because you will be able to revive all of our pets this could be drastically more valuable we might not even need prime regen which could save us a slot for i don't know whatever we want uh, but it also has reawakening i foresee that if we're going to get some sort of thing that allows us to revive our pets on our own, it's very likely that Reawakening will be one of those few mods that actually gets a change. I have a feeling like maybe five pet mods will be changed or something like that. Hopefully it's a lot of them, but if they're going to change any pet mods, it's probably going to be just a few, and we'll get overall blanket changes like I said. So this is on the list of high potential to be changed solely because its mechanic might be completely irrelevant when we get another quicker way to to revive it, uh, our things. Uh, also, this is, I believe, 100 uh, syndicate points from Cephalon Samaris. So this is kind of expensive. So the devs would certainly be incentivized to change these Samaris mods as that would incentivize players to do more grinding and something they've completely disregarded because most people don't give a shit about these sort of pets or their mods or cephalon samaris but if they change that well now all of a sudden you have to care about your cephalon samaris mods because the pets are a lot better and you have more options another one to be aware of is the shade prime right now it's pretty much useless uh it will cloak you which is actually kind of fucking cool uh especially for certain frames apparently it has like a glitched effect on ivara but i have not been able to confirm i've seen a lot of uh whispers about it to not tell and whatnot but i I can't confirm it, so it's just uh, hearsay as far as I'm concerned. But this is another one of those Cephalon Samaris mods. Uh, when the invisibility is broken, Shade's owner is granted 240% weapon damage. Uh, this may not seem like a lot because damage has diminishing gains or diminishing returns, however we want to put it, but it is still very useful, partly because you generally just want your pets to be there to be utility so having a utility that provides invisibility and also boosts your weapon damage it's only for three seconds but that's still like that's actually useful because your weapon is your main damage dealer so we saw that that was 240 percent we're going to go all the way over here and we're going to go to vigorous swap i really like vigorous swap a lot of people use this on their builds uh and it's 165 damage. Uh, you get this whenever you melee and then start shooting. That's considered a swap. So Vigorous Swap is extremely good uh, way to supplement damage on certain frames. Not every frame can fit it on their build, uh, but it's it's almost twice the value of Vigorous Swap, and a lot of people use this mod with good reason. Um, so I, that's another potential uh, thing to be aware of is the Shade Prime, especially because look at this. Look at the details on this. This is beautiful. This is just the uh, uh, like the the base colors, I guess or my base colors and just the uh the prime fashion that came with this bundle so it's all the work the devs put in this you think they would definitely be incentivized to make the pets a lot better that way more people get more of the fashion item for these pets they spend more time grinding for samaris credits for more of these samaris mods again uh the mod i showed you uh ambush is a samaris mod there's a there's a bunch of good ones um but another pet to uh kind of be aware of coming up is going to be the helios because this does scanning uh, a lot of people just want code 
codex scanning. I forget exactly what it gets you. Uh, but codex scanning, there's also a mod that I don't have for this that allows it to uh, scan plants and harvest plants for you. Or I think it's for this one. Stuff like that is going to be very viable. Um, oh, and another thing about the Digin that I forgot to mention that's very important is that this uh, has a, a really cool... Um, weapon i guess you should say it has thumper so this mod is 60 meters range this is the second highest uh 60 meter range it will start shooting which is very good but the that's on digin whereas balloon or the deriga uh deriga has a 70 meter 70 meter radius so uh just so those are some things to be aware of carrier might be good too for uh people who are using weapons that have ammo problems carrier is still i haven't used it in like eight years or so or like <laughs> a very long time um, this used to be the only way to get vacuum on your build was to use this weapon. This used to be what every single, um, this used to be vacuum. This used to be what every single companion pet looked like. Uh, but times have changed a little bit. Uh, that being said, coolant leak, you don't really want to use anymore because it's only three meters and it doesn't apply a cold status effect. It just freezes them and it will, it'll make everything stop shooting you and then they'll shoot your pet. So your pet will fucking get evaporated with this. It does. It is not worth it to run that anymore, unfortunately. Uh, but that's pretty much the long and short of it. I just wanted to go over some of the main points of this presentation. So the number one thing that I'm trying to tell you right now is to A, farm these bots. Get some of these bots now. Be ready with the formas uh, so that when the changes do come, you're prepared and you don't have to spend all this time farming for them when the changes come out and instead you can just enjoy it when the changes come out. But more importantly, you should consider getting ribbons for your companion weapons even if you just like using i don't know the prisma burst laser you like using one of these weird obscure ones whatever companion weapon you like using uh we'll even go to the helios say you like using the little uh the baton thing it sends out <laughs> uh the deconstructor say you just like use it get a ribbon for it you know sometimes some of these ribbons you can get for literal free from players who don't know what they are or don't care or don't think it'll be of any use um and you can get them from several different ways you can get them from arbitrations you can get them from the uh Daviri lady vendor person so there's several ways to get them aside from using plat and aside from using the market but as I said, any like you don't understand how important uh, companion ribbons are until you've had a good one. Once you had a good one, it totally changes. Uh, like I was saying about the Hellstrom earlier, it's night and day. My Hellstrom was like an okay thing, and now it's like an insane priming tool. It, it, no matter what I put on it, because I have projectile speed and fire rate, this is an obscene, everything's covered in pink, because again, I make my colors, well not on this, but I make them pink, so that way I can tell exactly what's prime so uh reiterating for a third time main takeaways get your pets now get your ribbons now and kind of think about what weapons you like because a lot of these things are going to be a lot more viable uh stuff like the moas are going to be a lot more viable because not only are they tanky and have things like stasis field where they can give you basically mini adaptation and do some grouping but now they're going to be able to be revived if you for some reason can't get them during the like 60 seconds that they have so try to think about that as these pets i, I think moas are going to shoot up a lot in the tier list as they have some useful abilities but they most importantly they can have a weapon uh put on them whereas with the hounds you know the hounds you're stuck with the the three weapons they have i deleted the one because they take up slots um but that is the long and short of it. Uh, are, if you have any sort of uh, advice to give on pet companions or companion ribbons or companion weapons, I would love to hear it because I feel like, uh, especially in my comments section, whenever I'm wrong or incorrect or there's something I don't know, I learn a lot from my comments. Uh, I'm surprised that a lot of Warframe comment sections are complete shitters, but I've actually learned a lot from mine, which is uh, I feel very blessed to have... Um, 
uh, <laughs> people who have actual brains watching me, because uh, sometimes I feel like my brain doesn't work so well. So it's very nice that I have uh, other people to rely on. So that being said, that that's all of it. Uh, go out there, get those ribbons. Try to make sure whatever ribbon prices people offer you, never pay full price. If they say it's 100 plat, counter off for 80 and then meet them at 90. Watch some uh, precious gem or precious metals or watch trading videos or shoe trading videos any sort of commerce trading videos on YouTube you should a thousand percent watch not just for Warframe but it'll help you be able to negotiate with stuff in real life um, like because you're gonna constantly be negotiating with stuff in real life depending on your job or uh, no matter what your job is eventually you're gonna have to negotiate with people so make sure you get your negotiating skills up especially when dealing with trade chat because who knows maybe you can negotiate them off a ledge and you can get a much better deal never pay full price if they are uh, if say they have a ribbon you want and you make an offer and they say no and they block you don't get offended by that because generally speaking when people absolutely refuse to come down that means they're a ribbon flipper who bought the like say they're offering it for 1300 that probably means they bought it for 1200 and they refuse to go lower because they want to make a profit on it so don't be offended by that uh, but that's everything i have to spew at you thank you for listening to my presentation if you enjoyed this the only way you can let me know is to just look up who the public officials of are in your area and try to go online and see if they have any sort of like arrest record or anything like that. So get on that.